third century Rome is racked by internal strife and barbarian invasions. But by 295 AD, a powerful new emperor has emerged as the empire's savior. His name is Diocletian. Diocletian insists that everyone at court, including Constantine, make regular sacrifices. For above all, Diocletian believes unity in the empire comes from appeasing Rome's pagan gods. But another religion is gathering many converts, putting Diocletian's plans at risk. Its followers worship the son of a new god, Jesus Christ. Diocletian begins in his own imperial army, where he requires that all soldiers make sacrifices to the gods of Rome, though many Christians refuse. Punishment for rejecting the emperor's edict is death, a brutality that Constantine, as a soldier in Diocletian's army, is forced to witness. In 303 AD, Emperor Diocletian issues an edict against all Christians that becomes known as the Great Persecution. Any Christian who proclaims his faith in public is subject to death. Despite his reservations about the persecutions, Constantine must stay on good terms with the man who will likely determine his future. But when Diocletian unexpectedly falls ill and is forced to retire, Constantine is surprised to find himself shut out of the succession plan. But unlike Constantine's, Maxentius's claim to the throne is not legitimate. Maxentius defeats, imprisons, and eventually murders the rightful co-emperor of Italy. The desperate uprising of Rome's oppressed masses offers an unexpected opportunity for Constantine. Hoping to save the people of Rome and expand his own reach into Italy, Constantine travels from Gaul to Milan to strike a deal with another co-emperor, Licinius. Constantine strikes an alliance with his equally ambitious co-emperor Licinius to destroy Maxentius and divide the empire between them. While Licinius is occupied with defending the empire's northern border from barbarian invaders, Constantine marches on Rome, laying siege to the imperial city where Maxentius hides. Though grossly outnumbered by Maxentius, Constantine and his army, now marked by the Christian Cairo, ride into battle with courage. It is at the banks of the Tiber that Maxentius's fate is sealed. With the defeat of Maxentius, all of the Western Empire belongs to Constantine. As agreed, he leaves the East for Licinius to take. Licinius was not a Christian himself, although he agreed with Constantine to stop persecution. In 313 AD, Constantine and Licinius jointly issue the Edict of Milan. But in the years that follow, Constantine's relationship with Licinius deteriorates. After nine years of shared rule, both emperors covet control over the entire empire. It is a rivalry that will quickly drive Rome towards civil war. In the East, Christians soon bear the brunt of the growing conflict. As supporters of the Christian emperor Constantine, they are now Licinius's greatest threat. They pay a heavy price. Ultimately, one of the responses was a renewal of persecution. For Constantine, now a seasoned ruler of middle years, the persecution of Christians is just the excuse he needs to attack Licinius. 
he quickly orders his troops to march on his eastern rival. Constantine and Crispus annihilate Licinius's army. And in the final battle, their victory wins Constantine's sole rulership of the entire empire. The result is the Nicene Creed, a statement of faith that has survived over 1,600 years and is still recited today in Christian churches around the world. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten of the Father.